Hello YouTube, Flight Sim Guy here. I am in Kingston, Jamaica. Yes, I'm still here. Not going anywhere anytime soon. And today we are gonna do a cold and dark startup of the Leonardo MD80. Now, the fact that I'm publishing this video the same day that the reboot of this aircraft is being released is not a coincidence. This is one of the old school study sims uh, back in the mid uh, 2000s. This along with uh, Level D uh, Simulations 767 and PMDG's products, they uh, held the benchmark for study sim aircraft and this is an absolute favorite. This aircraft, the MD-80, if you were to ask retired uh, old school pilots what some of their favorite planes to fly, you'd hear often two responses. One is the uh, Lockheed L-1011 and the McDonnell Douglas MD-80. Now as you can see, the MD-80 is really an updated version of the DC-9 because what happened was Douglas uh, aircraft was bought out by McDonnell uh, a while back in the 70s and when McDonnell Douglas merged with uh, Douglas or when, when McDonnell aircraft merged with Douglas the uh, DC-9 became part of their product suite and they went ahead and updated it and what we have is the MD-80. Technically, I want to say this is an MD-82. Now, Leonardo is coming out with a reboot of this aircraft on February 20th. And the reboot is going to, essentially, they're updating everything for 64-bit sims. And they're completely redoing the cockpit textures for uh, 4K high-res textures. But I want to say the system simulation, since it was near perfect when it was originally released, remains the same. One of the reasons why I'm doing the Colin Dark startup is one of my uh, viewers, he was looking at one of the Cessna citation videos I published a while back and he said he was very disappointed because I flew the plane uh, by not following the step-by-step uh, -step, uh, procedures and he's absolutely right and the reason why I don't do that very often is because uh, doing everything by the book in these planes is very very complicated now the documentation for this aircraft includes all the startup and test procedures system tests system checks that you normally do for the first flight of the day and I'm going to go through all of that uh, as a response to the comment that I got from uh, that gentleman on the Cessna citation to indicate or to show everyone how freaking long and complicated this thing is. So I got the documentation right here and I'm going to go through everything page by page by the book and try not to skip over it, try not to skip over anything. I'm also going to do a flight from Kingston to Miami with this aircraft it will be my first flight and I'm a little bit nervous primarily because I've never flown this before and I'm probably sure I'd screw it up I'd be lucky if I don't crash it I'll do the uh, the aircraft configuration some other time there's a desktop application that you can load to set up the fuel weight balance and all the options I'll do that some other time in this video let's do the cold and dark startup alright let's get to the first page all right, first thing we want to do, set the parking brake. Next thing we want to do is turn on the power. Here's the overhead panel. You'll never find the battery master because this thing is in the way. Turn that on. As you can see, not much has happened, which is fine. Next thing you want to do is confirm that you got juice from the battery. Bring this over here, battery volt. And, and I think you need at least 24 volts. So. This is AC volts. This is volt and amp. Here we go. We got uh, 26. So we're good to go here. Next thing, you want to make sure your windshield wiper is off. That's down here. Your hydraulic pumps, make sure that they're off. And it's in the middle section right here. Off. You also make sure that your flaps and slats are retracted. That's this right here. It's all the way up. And your speed brake lever, which is actually this, is down. And it is. Next thing you want to do is switch on the external lights. Actually, they're on the co-pilot side, uh, which is number nine. And you want to position strobe to both. And we want 
wing nacelle to on. And then we turn off these master caution warnings. Now before you can start the APU where you're injecting fuel into the aircraft, you need to check your fire suppression systems. Hold down both left and right mouse buttons. Okay. Now the book says we must check a total of 14 lights. I'm not sure if we did something wrong, but none of the lights that they want us to check are on. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that. All right, next we need to start the APU. Now to start the APU, over here the start pump this is the fuel pump that sends uh, fuel to the APU. Turn that on. And then APU start. And it takes a couple seconds before it actually spools up and starts uh, start uh, the process. Here it now goes. when the APU is ready, this is going to light up. And then we can go ahead and turn on the APU generators. That's going to provide juice to the aircraft. Here it's ready. Here's your APU generator. It's already on norm. That's where it needs to be. Okay. You have to wait 60 seconds before you can get bleed air from the APU. But in the meantime, we can go ahead and turn these on. Now we need to check to make sure we're getting AC. Now we need to check to make sure we're getting AC from the APU. Here's APU over here. And there. We have 115 volts at 400 hertz. So we're good to go on the APU. Now we need to make sure that we're getting bleed air from the APU. And we need to make sure we turn on the air conditioning so that our passengers don't boil. Put it on cool. Okay, cold. Whatever. Here you have your cabin, and here you have your cockpit, where you can go ahead and set the temperature to make sure everyone is good to go. Next, we need to open the pneumatic crossfeed and move the right air conditioning supply to auto. Okay, so we have the air conditioning supplied to auto. The pneumatic crossfeed is actually, okay, here we go. The pneumatic crossfeed is down here. We want to move the right one open. Now we must test the interphone communication system and the emergency lights. Now for those, that's in the aft overhead panel, which is back here. We increase the PA volume, public address volume in the audio panel. That's this. Move the emergency lights to the on position. The emergency lights is down here, at the bottom of your panel. And verify the emergency light not on annunciation is displayed in the EOAP. This is the EOAP, and here it is emergency light not armed. Let's go ahead and put it to arm, and that went off. We call the flight attendant by right clicking with the mouse on the attendant call for push button. Okay, the flight attendant call button is right here. Now, let me take a quick break from what I'm doing. This is Leonardo's original MD80. Back in the day when uh, add on developers uh, produced their add ons. There were two interfaces. You had the virtual cockpit and the 2D cockpit. A lot of people at the time liked to fly with the 2D cockpit. Okay? So, in the case of the Leonardo MD80, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Over here, see, it has a 2D version. If you right click it here, it actually comes up with this. Okay? And it's going through that whole process right there. Now, the thing is, the thing is, it doesn't do that in the virtual cockpit. So, that's a trade off that you have to make when you're going through with the Leonardo MD80. All right, next. Now we need to switch on the PFD 
and the EFIS control panel. So you come down here. This looks dark. You can move the yoke out of the way by clicking on it. But you got to turn everything up. Like that. Now we need to turn on the flight director switches. There's two. One for the pilot and the co-pilot. Turn that on. Turn that on. And we can also turn these up here. We now test all the digital display and advisory lights by pushing and holding the Annunciation Digital, digital Lights Test. Now, that is on the overhead panel. There's actually two lights that do this. Um, here it is right here. So, to check to make sure it works. Let's get this view and check out the Christmas tree it creates. And that's checked to make sure that all your lights work. Once we've verified that all the displays and lights are working, we have several other tests to perform. All right, so let's do the autopilot switch test. Now, to do that, let's uh, get a good view of the panel right here. And we also want a good view of this. Let's turn on the autopilot. And then turn it off using whatever you have mapped to your autopilot disconnect. Let's try it again. Here's the autopilot. Off. And there, that's flashing. That's all we're really testing. All right, now we need to do the EFIS test. Set VHF NAV1 and NAV2 to an ILS non-local frequency, 109.5. All right, so this is NAV1, this is NAV2. 109.5. Set decision height of 100 feet. Now, I certainly hope they fix this. And here's what I'm talking about. Here's your decision height. So you gotta use your scroll wheel and keep turning this until it gets up to 100. Okay. Push the EFIS test button and hold it until the end of the test. That's this right here. Now the test will complete when everything goes back to its original state. Like that. And then we reset the decision height back to zero. There. Next we need to test the auto land availability. Set VHF nav 1 and 2 to 109.5. Press the auto land button in the flight guidance control panel. The test ends when the no auto land light in the FMA turns off. All right, so let's go back to here. Press. There's your no auto land. Okay. Check that the selector for the alternate static air is in the norm position. There's two of them. And you know, when I first went through this process, it took me about two hours, it was like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. You couldn't find anything in this damn cockpit. It was hard as hell. All right, come on down. And here is the alternate static. Okay, make sure that's in the norm. There's two of them, one over here and one by the co-pilot over there. Primary and alternate stabilizer trim test. Now for this one, this is relatively straight. What you gotta do is move this and check to make sure that the trim thingy right here moves. Okay? Only problem is I'm moving it and for some reason it's not moving. I'm not sure if I'm doing this wrong. Okay? Maybe the hydraulic pumps need to be on for this, but it's not moving. So, maybe I screwed something up. That is not working. Next, flight recorder aids test. In the, in the aft overhead panel, move the guarded flight recorder, switch to the ground test position and check that the enunciation flight recorder off disappears from the OAP, the EOAP. Alright, so, flight recorder is off and the button is right here. Move this down 
and come back down here and you can't see it but the flat recorder off is no longer there so that's good and down here you insert the day month and flight number and leg for the flight and you can use your mouse scroll wheel in this case we are 1802 and this is the flight number leg one all right now we move the flight recorder back to the norm close this and the flight recorder off should come back on here and there it is right there next we need to do the cargo smoke detection and fire suppression uh, system test that's back in your aft overhead check all the panel indicators are on oral activation and cargo fire light in the WAP release the button alright so it's gonna be kinda tricky to test it up here and see what all it does it's very hard to get both buttons in your field of view nearly impossible let's try it over here next check that all the instruments transfer selectors aft overhead knobs are normal that's these and we can go to the aft overhead like so come on down these should all be norm 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 next we need to test the wind shear alert and guidance system test all right so to do that this is right here all right next we need to do the emer emergency electrical power test all right so all we need to do is go to the overhead no searching here it's one big ass button do that make sure this light comes on and move the meter selector in the battery amp position and check that the current is between 10 and 50 to the right the battery is discharging so okay so this is slowly discharging so eventually this is going to slowly run down move the emergency power to off and check 40 amp to the left battery is charging there it goes so that test is good all right next we need to do the fuel system test verify that the fuel crossfeed lever is in the off position now this is very tricky all right this aircraft has some controls that you need that you can't see from here so I had to map a key um, which one is it this one right here and this is the fuel uh, transfer crossfeed that on okay verify that's in the off position switch off all the fuel boost pumps and the start pump and verify that these all show up and the master caution are on so what that's saying is go back over here turn this off make sure these are all off and confirm that it's showing the low fuel pressure now the master caution warnings to pull out there it goes and you can go ahead and click to turn those off now you need to switch on and then off each individual fuel pump and make sure that the lights react accordingly so All right. All right. Now, when testing either of the four pumps, move the fuel cross field lever to the on position and check that the inlet fuel pressure low relative to the opposite system also comes off and then on again when the fuel 
crossword feed is moved back to the off position. So, and I'm not sure how you're going to do this, but what that's saying is you got to move this back and forth and check to make sure that the lights adjust or turn on and off accordingly. And it's very, very hard to do that uh, in a simulator. It just is because you can't see both at the same time. So with that, I'm going to skip this. Now, having said that, you never have to actually do these tests. It's just to give you the uh, feel or the experience of doing the actual system tests first, the first flight of the day because you can also set the failure systems or the failure rate for this add-on in the configurator and I have it set to no failures so in reality I don't need to do any of these tests alright so I'm gonna go ahead and skip where we're moving the uh, crossfeed on and off and seeing what it does up here and it says leave the aft fuel boost pump on alright so we're gonna go ahead and leave the aft the aft right, aft right, leave that one on. Move no smoking and seat belt switch to on. That's over here. We now test all the pito and static heaters positions in order to check current absorption on the in the indicator. So what that's doing is you're testing your your heating systems to check to make sure they actually work. Now, one way to do that would be to turn them on and go outside and touch them. You'd probably burn yourself. But a better way to do that is to uh, just turn them on and see that it's drawing current. It's drawing current from the circuits here. So, we now test all the pito and static heaters. We now test all the pito and static heater positions in order to check current absorption on the indicator. We should see absorption for every position that is not powered on the ground. When finished, move the selector back to the captain position. So what that's saying is, for every one of these, this changes. And the rat probe, we don't see anything. And then when we're done, put this back to captain. Check that the engine anti-ice switches and airfoil switches are off. These are all off off and we move the windshield anti-ice 7 uh, move the windshield anti-ice to the on position we also check that the engine sink is in the off position the engine sink switch is up here and that needs to be in the off position 12 o'clock now we check that the ground proximity warning system and overhead panel is guarded and in the norm position that's this right here. We move the stall test first to the SIS1 and then SIS2 to verify oral activation. Your stall test is right here. We move the yaw damper to the on position. It's actually here but you can't see it because the switch is in the way. And check that the yaw damper off enunciation is off. And there is no yaw damper down here. Move the max speed worn test first to the SIS1, then the SIS2 to verify oral activation. Over speed. Over speed. Move the mock trim to the norm position and check that the mock trim in up enunciation is off. Mocktrin in up is not showing up here. If necessary, we switch on the tail lights by moving the logo lights to the on position. In this case, we're flying in the day, so we don't need that. Your logo lights is up here. Now, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why they do this, but you have one of your external lights up here, and you have all the ones down here, and all that does is add more confusion to the process. All right, moving on. We move the ICE FOD for an object debris to the test position and verify that the ICE FOD test annunciations are displayed in the EOAP. All right, so let's go back to over here. 
Yes, this. Let's do it again. There it is. All right. One more time. Ice fodder alert left and right. Okay, so that works. Okay, here's some fun stuff. If the transfer lockout and or standby lights are on, we must move the pressurization system switch to standby and then back to primary. The standby on should go off. Push the transfer lockout lights to reset it. All right, so that's the pressurization, which is right here. So it's saying that if the lights are on, we move the pressurization switch to standby and then back to primary. Now, um, you know, didn't have that, so... But that's all that is. Turn that, turn those two on, move it back to reset it, and click that to turn off the top one. With the landing altitude knob, select the altitude of the destination runway, airport runway, in our case, five feet. Now we're going to Florida, so yeah, about five feet. So landing altitude, that's here. Uh, just leave it five feet. I'm pretty sure that's what Miami is. And with the landing barometer, the QNH at the destination. Now, <laughs> again, this is in uh, metrics. Uh, we use um, mercury and not, uh, not, not, not this stuff. So whatever the uh, landing uh, barometer is, you put that in here. Now, obviously, you do this um, when you're on your uh, descent and you get the METAR and you know what the uh, barometric pressure is at your destination. You do that then, not now. Check the flow light by pushing it and making sure that it comes on. And that's all that is. We now check that the air conditioning valves work in the manual mode. Move the cabin temperature select in the manual hot position and verify the valve indicator moves to hot. Okay, that's easy enough. So all you have to do is move this and make sure that that moves. And you have to use... I guess you could do that. There you go. And that. And then it moves there. That's all that is. And that's for the cockpit. And you do the same thing again for the cabin. That's all that test is doing. Check that the radio rack switch is in the fan position. Radio rack is right over here. So that needs to be there. Check that the air conditioning shutoff switch is in the auto position and that the ram air switch is in the off position. Alright, and for that one, air conditioning shutoff switch is in the auto position. That's this. And that the ram air switch is in the off position. That's this. That needs to be off. That's all that is. Now we need to set the guidance panel. 250 knots. So what you do is move this to 250 and then click this to go to Mach and set that to 0.75. There's an actual there's actually a decimal there, you just can't see it. Alright. Then we set it back to speed. Move the bank limit selector to 15 degrees. That's on the heading. You want to limit the bank angle to 15 degrees. 10, 15 is the second notch. Put that right there. Next, we perform the altitude alert test. Set QNH to 10, 12 on the pilot's altimeter and check that the DFGS selector switch is in the 1 position. Alright, so set this to 1012, like so. The DFGS is this switch right here. That needs to be in one position. Set the altitude readout to a value of 1000 feet higher than the field elevation. So over here is your altitude. Set this up to a thousand.
and rotate the barometer selector clockwise so that the altitude indicated by the altimeter moves towards the selected altitude. So all that says is keep moving this up. And what's going to happen is this is going to change colors on you. There. 750 feet below 1000, which is 250, this comes on. That's all that is. All right, let's put this back. Or you can just hit B. Reset the fuel used indicator by pushing the reset button. The fuel used will display for two seconds and then the value will be reset. All right, so the fuel used is down here. So that's this button right here, you push this. Now, I should point out to you that in this aircraft, in this Air Leonardo MD-80, fuel within the aircraft is managed and displayed in kilograms, not pounds, okay? So you need to go back and forth between kilograms and pounds when you're setting up the fuel using the simulator or using the, uh, the, the FSX fuel settings. This is kilograms per hour fuel flow. Straight that out. Okay, that part is done. Moving on. Test the thrust reduction control by pushing the test button and verifying that the RAT indicator displays 12 degrees and the EPR limit is 2.04. So let's go to the thrust reduction control panel. This is right here. I want to check to make sure that the EPR limit is 2.04, which is up here, and that the RAT indicator is 12 degrees which is here. But in this case, 27, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot warmer, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, it says 12, and EPR limit is 204. And that's all that is. Now we test the fuel quantity indicator. Push the zero fuel weight knob. Pay attention on clicking it in the center position when the cursor hand does not have the plus minus sign, and read the zero fuel weight. All right, so that's this down here. All you need to remember is this is in kilograms. And I don't need to explain to you guys what zero fuel weight is, gross weight. You know what all this. All this stuff right here is in kilograms. Just remember that. Push the test button and verify that the left, right, and center tank displays uh, shows the proper amount that you have loaded. And we did all that down here. Okay. Moving on, test the landing gear, lights, and oral by clicking the landing gear. That's easy enough. Now what you have to do is click it and pull down. Now we need to check the hydraulic system. All right, now the, the switches for the hydraulics is right over here. So to see those properly, you gotta go to the co-pilot side and move the step back. All right. The fluid quantity must be above 12 quarts. Move the auxiliary hydraulic pump to the temporary override position and verify that the pressure rises on the right system. All right, so move this to the override and verify the pressure rises to the right. Here are your hydraulic system readouts back here. Okay, let's hold it down. And there it goes. Move the auxiliary hydraulic pump switch to the on position. That's this. Move it up to on. And verify that the hydraulic pressure will stabilize to a value between 2800 PSI and 3200 PSI. Alright. Let's go ahead and take a look. Alright, that's good. Next, we move the transfer pump switch to on and verify that the pressure on the left system stabilizes at a value of 2,000 PSI. And there it goes. It's above 2,000, it's at 26. 
Move the rudder hydraulic control lever to the manual position and verify that the rudder center manual enunciation is displayed in the EOAP. Move back the lever to the hydraulic up position and verify that the enunciation goes off. All right, that control, you need to come over here. That's this. All right. So this is one of those controls where you have to move it here and then verify that the thing up here, and there it is right there, the light reacts accordingly. This is another one of those things where it's uh, very difficult to do in the simulator. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back. All right, verify the engine driven pumps switches are both in the high position and move back the transfer pump five, move back the transfer pump and the auxiliary pump switches to the off position. All right, so let's go back over here. These need to be in the high position and they are and the transfer pump and auxiliary needs to be off. Now, there are two sets of pumps. When it comes to hydraulics, there's two sets of pumps um, on the aircraft. There's the engine-driven hydraulics, and then there's the auxiliary hydraulics, which is often electrical. These are the engine ones, and these are the electric ones. The electric is the auxiliary, that's your backup. Usually, uh, from my experience, you fly with all of them on. So, All right, moving on. Test the brake temperature indicator, pushing the test button and verify that the indicated temperature is between 425 and 475 and that the overheat, the overheat light LED is on. All right, so for those, what you need to do, come down to the co-pilot side and those buttons are down here. Push the test button, which is here. This came on and that came up to there. And that's all you need to do on that. Check that the alternate static air selector on the co-pilot side is in the norm position. We already did that. That's this over here. Now we need to test the weather radar. First we increase the weather radar brightness on ND by rotating clockwise the inner black knob which we already did can do it some more and we need to set the aphis which is over here to arc there we go that's that right there now we turn on the weather radar by hitting power and then hit test weather radar is on and test and there that goes And you can shut off the test by hitting the test button again. And then we turn off the weather radar. Moving on. To test the takeoff warnings, we advance the throttles and we must hear four different orals. Flaps, slat, brake, and stabilizer. Alright, so to do that, you come back here and just move your throttles up. Check that the fuel shutoff valves are in the off positions. Now, that's these two right here. And since my mixture controls are mapped to the fuel cutoff, they just happen to come back, come back whenever I bring that back. So let's do that. Check that the fuel transfer feed is off. This is your fuel transfer feed. This has to be off. We test the TCAS by moving the selector in the center pedestal to the test position and checking that the VSI TCAS display is uh, similar to the figure shown. After we hear the TCAS system R, we move the selector to the TARA. All right, so that's easy enough. So your TCAS should be right here. Just move it to test. And then move it to TAR. 
All right, next we need to test and verify that the ADF, your automatic direction finder, works. Verify that both pointers are visible on the the display and push and hold the test button for each ADF. Verify that the pointer moves to a relative bearing of 135. Make sure your ADF pointers are visible. There we go. There it is right there. And then press and hold test. Now your ADF is right here. So again, this is another one of those things where you gotta make it so that you can see two at the same time. And there it is pointing to 135. And this other test I imagine is for the other one over there. Uh, actually it's for the other uh, the other dial. And there it goes. All right. So these two buttons test the ADF for both dials on your display. Alright, TRC. That's your thrust reduction control. I don't see where it says that in the book, I'm just assuming. And here's where you can derate your engines based on the temperature. Um, just go ahead and click take off and it sets an EPR limit of 1.92. And you just have to hope and pray that when you mash the throttles forward, it'll uh, spool up uh, you know, to the power that you need for the plane to take off. So. Thrust reduction control, whatever phase of flight you're in, just go ahead and press it, and the system will uh, tell the engine to, uh, or, or give uh, constraints or limits on the engine so uh, it uh, uses less fuel and less wear and tear. Now, the book then goes into setting up your guidance panel. So, um, we can go ahead and do that if we want. Uh, we know we're going to take off on runway uh, 120. And one thing I don't like with this is you have to use the scroll wheel and it doesn't go any faster. So it takes forever to turn this to where he needs to go. Alright, 120. And then you go ahead and set this to say uh, 10,000 feet initially. Both flight directors are on. I mean, this is what we do all the, all the time in, uh, you know, in all of our flights. And um, this is your vertical speed. You can just go ahead and set it uh, at, say, 1500, 1500 uh, at the beginning if you want to use that. And just continue setting up, finish setting up your guidance panel. All right. And next, you go and you set up your flight management computer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do it really, really fast. I already have a second video for this, but I'm going to make this one really, really simple. Position Annette, we'll go ahead and use this. And our airport, we are at MKJP. P stands for Palisados. That was the name of the airport before it became Norman Manley International. You put that there. Actually, I need to be doing this like so. All right. Next, you go to your route. Destination is KMIA. All right, and then we're going to enter the waypoints uh, between uh, Miami and uh, Kingston, not including your uh, Sitton Stars. So, Teuton, and I'm doing this by memory, and then Ursus, U R S U S. And then you're gonna go activate, execute. Let's do the perfinet. Our fuel is twelve thousand five hundred. Zero fuel weight is forty nine one. So go ahead and enter the zero fuel weight, forty nine point one. Reserves I know is two point five. And fuel is. 12.5 and you got to put a slash n cruise altitude let's go ahead and put that in and let's go ahead and make our transition so take off 
Now, for this aircraft, it will not compute your takeoff speeds. You have to look them up based on the weight of the aircraft. And in this case, 62,000 kilograms, we want 134 for V1. Rotate is 139. V2 is 146. There. And you can go ahead and set up the speeds on here by dragging these where you need them to be. get everything in order some other time. All right, next we need to do our departure. Let's take off from runway 12, and we are gonna be using the save them five departure. Our transition is save them, execute. All right, and next we click on departure arrival. index here we go then we got Miami and we want for our star flipper five and our transition is gonna be Ursus and we also want ILS 9 execute now this is strictly for demonstration purposes in real in real life you enter your star and your approach and your runway uh, on your descent. Next we need to verify the route. Click on legs. We have a couple of discontinuities here. Let's get rid of the first one. Let's get rid of this one. And we have Ursus there twice. I got that took care of that. Next page. And uh, next page. Let's get rid of this discontinuity. This I know we don't need. Execute. Next. Okay. Now to verify the route, what you got to do, move this to plan. So you go over to EFIS and move it to plan. There it is right there. And here you just go to legs and step, 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 step. And as you can see, it entered the, the missed approach for the ILS-9 that we entered. All right, so your, flights, your uh, flight management computer now is a done deal. Go ahead and leave it at legs. And now, we are ready to do the engine start and taxi. All right? So, after you get clearance and you are, everything is good to do, go, you do your pushback. And for your engine start, what you got to do is go to your overhead panel. Okay, we have bleed air. Turn these off. Turn on all your boost bumps. APU here needs to be norm. You got bleed air. These are off. All your fuel pumps are on. Next, you need to turn on your uh, anti-collision lights. Let people know you're about to start. Check to make sure you have enough pneumatic pressure. Up here. Right here. Check to make sure you have enough pneumatic pressure. And then you need to make sure that your cross feeds are open. That's these knobs right here. Pneumatic cross fees both need to be open. And now we're ready to do our engine start. Now to do the engine start, you need to be able to see both your N, N1 and N2. Here are the start switches. And here are your fuel cutoff valves. All right, where are the valves? Okay, they're black, they're blending in, kind of hard to see. But since I can control them with my mixture knob, I should be good. So, I'm ready to start. Oh, one more thing you need to do before you can start your engines. You need to make sure that your ignitions are on, your igniters are on. So, select back to both. How could I forget that? And now we can go ahead and start our engines.
wait for N2 to get up to 22 and then you can go ahead and turn on the fuel there we go now in case you have noticed you're not going to hear much of an engine uh, rumble when you start the engines on the ND80 primarily because the engines are all the way back here and the paddles are all the way up here so for a lot of the flights like you're flying a glider you don't hear the engines very well alright so that's it for engine number one let's do engine number two you can move your view around just keep your finger on the mouse and it will hold all right we are at 22 there we go next you go back to your overhead and this part is very important okay your engine generators are on you don't need power from the APU anymore and turn off your APU that way you save some gas alright next we're in Jamaica so you probably don't need engine anti-ice turn your anti-fog just in case these anti-ice systems you probably don't need them uh, what else you got parking brake on anti-skid go ahead and turn on your anti-skid to arm uh, that way if you don't if you're gonna abort you, you'll have uh, uh, your anti-lock brakes and we're almost done let's go ahead and give ourselves two notches of flaps and last but not least set your trim okay here's your trim you can move it down this way also if you want now it's working or you can move it this way but the point is you gotta set your trim now this right here this is a very very unique feature um, of the uh, the MD-80 it's a dial flap and uh, the flap setting for this aircraft based on this flight has to do with uh, the weight and balance which I did not spend any amount of time uh, setting up but whatever whenever you uh, set up your weight and balance you go ahead and configure it right here this is your dial flap where how the dial flap works is with most aircraft and this is unique to the MD-80 with most aircraft you have um, you know various degrees of flaps with the MD-80 you can actually change the flap position in between whatever the uh, the the, the, uh, the fixed positions are for example over here we just gave ourselves how much uh, 15 15 degrees of flaps so there's 11 and 15 and then it has 28 if you wanted to you could dial a flap setting in between 15 and 28 using your dial flaps which is right here now I, I honestly you know don't understand you know the purpose of that but since flap on this side and the gravity on this side for the trim so uh, another quirky thing with the MD-80 alright so I want to say for the most part this bird is ready to go all we have is parking brake on just go ahead and get your push back taxi start up and uh, taxi and you're good to go go ahead and take off and uh, you know do your flight alright so let me take a look at my OBS doesn't say how long I've been recording point is that was painful and that's everything by the book by this book anyways I did this video because as I said before Leonardo is releasing their rebooted version of this aircraft I'm gonna publish this video the same day 
that new aircraft drops so that if you're anxious and you want to get started, you'll have a reference. I imagine the procedures that I developed or the procedures that I've done for this video should work on the rebooted aircraft. If it doesn't, well, I guess I'd do it, I'll have to do it all over again. And that's all I have. Uh, my name is Flysome Guy. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.